Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about another container in the standard template library, which is going to be vectors, right? So uh, we already talked about arrays, and arrays are these fixed size containers that hold uh, elements of a certain type. Now vectors are kind of similar, as they hold elements of a certain a particular type, but the difference, uh, one of the big differences is that vectors can uh, grow, right? And they can also shrink. Right, depending on what we need them to do or how much space we want them to take up. Right, so we don't always know the amount of data we're going to be storing or working with ahead of time. Right, so vectors provide us that flexibility. So let's go ahead and see how vectors work. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to include vector. Right, so new container, we'll need a new include. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do using std vector and std cout and then end line. That way we don't need to write this std colon colon every time we use those. All right, so now let's actually get to the declaration, which is right here. So we're creating a vector, right? And then we say we want a vector of integers, right? So with array, we had to do int, comma, then some uh, size, right? But that's because arrays are a fixed size container. So we need to know the size ahead of time uh, because that's not going to change. So we need to know it at the time that we're going to be creating our array. But with a vector, right, a vector is not fixed size. We don't need to specify a size. So here we call a vector called v1 that stores integers, and we'll go ahead and print out a size and a capacity. Now we didn't have a capacity with a with an array, and the reason is uh, it's because uh, arrays have a constant size, right? Which means the capacity is also going to be constant, right? Arrays don't grow and they don't shrink, right? They'll always have the exact same size, which means they always have the same capacity. But vectors they grow and they shrink. So we have both a size and a capacity. And we'll see how the capacity can change at a different rate than the size. But we have a guarantee that the capacity is always going to be greater than or equal to the size. right? And the reason for that is the size basically says, how many elements do I have in my vector? And then the capacity says, how many elements do I have space for? right? So it wouldn't make sense if I have more elements in my vector than I have space for, which is why capacity always needs to be greater than or equal to the size of the vector. Right, so let's go ahead and print these two things out. So we'll kind of incrementally go through these things. So we'll go ahead and uh, compile vectors.cpp and we'll call it have an executable called vectors. So let's go ahead and run it. And we see that at the very beginning, both our size and our capacity is zero, which makes sense. We have, we've just declared a vector. We haven't done anything with it yet. Okay, so let's go ahead back in and let's start saying, well, how do we actually change the size and the capacity? How do we add things to my uh, vector? So we've got two methods for you know putting things into our vector. It's this push back and in place back. Now there's slight differences between push back and in place back that we'll go into more detail once we start talking about uh, constructors and objects more. But the basic idea is that push back will create some object in this case an integer and then copy it into our vector. While in place back we'll go ahead and construct the object inside of the vector. Right. Uh, but there's a little more subtlety to that, so we'll go into that another time though. But for both of these, the really nice thing is we don't need to worry about expanding the capacity, right? So both of these will add an element to the vector. So my size is going to increase. Well, I'm going to need capacity, right, for my size to increase. But that expansion is taken care of, uh, taken care of for us, right? So when we call pushback or replace back, if we don't have the capacity to put a new element in, uh, our capacity is expanded behind the scenes uh, for us, right? And so we'll see that when we print out the new size and capacity. So let's go ahead and recompile and run. So we see we started with size and capacity of zero, and then we pushed back and we placed back a new element. Now our size and our capacity are both two, right? All right, cool, right? We don't have to worry about this allocation anymore. We don't need to worry about expanding our capacity, right? So I have two elements in my vector and I have space for two elements. Now what happens if we try to push back another element? All right. So let's go ahead and just try that and let's see what happens to the size and the capacity and if there's anything that we should look out for. So let's go ahead and we'll recompile and we'll run. So again, we start with zeros, then our size and capacity both grow, right? Now we have size and capacity two, and then we have size three, which makes sense. We've just pushed back another element. Could have been in a place back. We just use push back in this case. But our capacity grew faster than the size, right? So now the capacity is four and the size is three, 
Right? So why, why did that happen? Well, this is a bit of a performance optimization. Right? So if we have to you know, expand the capacity every single time we call pushback, that gets kind of expensive, right? And we don't you know, really want to do that, especially because in many cases when we're pushing back, right, maybe we're pushing back a lot of elements, right? Which means we're having to do a lot of expansions of that capacity. So what happens is this capacity gets expanded um, exponentially. Right? So first we allocate uh, for a single element, right? When we call the first pushback, it allocates for a single element. Then we do a pushback again. It expands the capacity for two elements, right? And then when we exceed two elements, it expands it again, but this time for four elements, right? Once we get past four elements, it'll expand for eight, right? And then after that for 16, then 32. So basically um, it's powers of two, right? So the first time it's two to the zero, then two to the one, then two to the two, two to the three, etc. And so this basically makes it so that as we keep pushing back elements, our, uh, our expansions of our capacity, our allocations become far less frequent. Right? So it's a bit of a performance optimization there. So here we've got a little explanation of it. So yeah, we, the vector allocates exponentially, right? So once we get past eight elements, a size of eight, right? And we try to push back something else. Um, and we have say size eight, capacity eight, Right? We basically end up pushing back an element, then we have size 9, capacity 16. Right? Okay, but what happens if, you know, maybe we've got a good idea of how many elements that we want in our vector, right? Um, well, we can also just say, hey, why don't I go ahead and just allocate all this ahead of time, right? That way I don't have to worry about this exponential allocation instead of having, you know, 7, 8, or 9 allocations, right? Or even more than that. I just want one, right? If I know how big of a size I want to allocate, I want you to allocate that size or allocate space for that many of this type, right? If I want 100 integers, well, go ahead and just give me space for 100 integers to begin with, right? So we can call reserve to get this done. Now, here's an interesting question. What happens if we call reserve, right? And it's smaller than our current capacity. So if remember, we have a capacity of four. Now, what happens if we say reserve three? So let's go ahead and run this, right? We'll compile and we'll run it. And we see that after reserve, nothing actually happens. So reserve actually only increases the size of the container, right? It doesn't actually decrease the size. So if it, if the, uh, if reserve is called and the number we pass in, say in is smaller or equal to the current uh, capacity, it does nothing. So what happens if we go ahead and increase it? Say, let's have space for a hundred elements. Uh, I want a space for 100 integers, a capacity of 100. So let's see what happens to the size and the capacity. So we'll go ahead and allocate this and we'll run it. And we see that, let's go ahead and put it up at the top. We'll see that I have a size of three still, right? But my capacity has grown to 100, right? So I've only pushed back. So I did a pushback and a placeback and another pushback. So I only have a size of three, but because I called reserve, it expanded the capacity to 100. And this happens in a single allocation, right? So instead of worrying about uh, or having to deal with, you know, that exponential allocation, just one big bulk allocation right there. Okay, so that's how reserve works. And again, doesn't affect the size of the container, just the capacity, and only if uh, the number passed in is greater than the current size. Okay, but you know what happens if I call this reserve? But it turns out I don't need that many elements. Well, we can always uh, fit the container. So we can call this shrink to fit, right? And this basically says, hey, go ahead and give up that extra capacity. I really don't need it. Maybe somebody else could use it. So we'll just shrink it down to whatever the size is. So let's go ahead and run this. So we'll get rid of this and we'll go ahead and recompile and we'll run it. And now you see that I go from a capacity of 100 and now it's when I called shrink to fit, it goes ahead and takes the capacity all the way down to the size of the vector. All right, pretty cool. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, I can also change the size of the vector, right? So here I'll call v1.resize. Right? In this case, I'm saying I want 10 total elements right, inside of my vector, but then I can also give it a value, right? So I can say, I want 10 total elements. And what this does is it says, okay, I already have a size of three. So it basically expands that container to have 10 total elements and when we say five here, it says, okay, all the new elements that I just kind of created, 
right? I'm going to initialize them with a value, right? So in this case, it'll initialize them with the value five. If we go ahead and we don't put a value right here, it goes ahead and default initializes them, in this case, because they're integers to zeros, right? So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll print out the size and the capacity after this resize. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, right? And so we'll do G++, vectors, we'll compile it, and we'll run it. So now we see that my size has expanded, and then my capacity has expanded to fit that size, right? But we really want to verify that everything I pushed back and placed back and pushed back and resized and filled, right? I want to make sure that all of those elements are still in there. So in the last video, we talked about um, for loops, right? And inside of that explanation, we talked about all that, uh, a lot of the different kinds, including using iterators, reverse iterators, and range-based for loops, even normal or more C-style for loops, right? So we won't go through all of those again. We'll, we'll show just like with arrays, we can use a range-based for loop. So we're saying for all the elements in V1, go ahead and print out that element and a space, and then print out uh, a new line character. That way we go back to a new line. All right, so let's just kind of dump the contents of our vector. So let's go ahead and recompile and we'll run. So now we see that I've got my pushback and in placeback elements. And then when I called resize and I filled it with um, the value of five, right? So I called resize 10 comma five. We see that all the remaining spot, spots are filled with fives. All right, pretty cool. So what happens if we resize and it's smaller than the current uh, size or capacity of the container? Well, we know that with reserve, if you know the number we're reserving right, is smaller than the current capacity, no change happens, uh, but that's actually not the case, right? When we go ahead and uh, call a resize, right? So a resize will actually affect the size of the container. So now our container will only have five elements, right? Instead of 10, right? But we'll also see what happens with the capacity, right? And then again, we'll use this for loop to just kind of dump the contents to see what happens, right? So let's go ahead and recompile and we'll run it. And we see that now my vector size is five and my capacity is 10, right? And it prints out um, the five elements. So a couple important things to note here, right? So when I go ahead and resize it, it would be kind of silly to just immediately give up the capacity, right? Yeah, I resize my container, but what if I need those extra elements in the future, right? And maybe I don't wanna pay the cost of having to free memory, right? While I'm doing something kind of unrelated. I just want to change the size of my container, right? Maybe I don't really care about freeing that memory right now. So I'll go ahead and just keep it around in case I need it later. So if I do another pushback, I don't have to reallocate, right? Because I still have a capacity of 10. And we see that it prints out the five elements that we've resized for here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back in. And now we'll see a couple other ways that we can get rid of elements in the container. So a lot of a lot of times we want to say get rid of the last element in the container. So like we have pushback, we also have pop back, right? And that will get rid of the last element in the container, right? And we'll see that um, similar to this resize. So let's go ahead and recompile and we'll run it. We'll see that it decreases the vector size, right? But again, it doesn't get rid of the capacity, right? We never said anything about getting rid of the capacity or that we want to get rid of the capacity. We just said I wanted to get rid of that element, right? So we get rid of that five at the very end, and we're left with one, two, three, five, right? The other note that I was going to mention, right, as far as these range-based for loops go, it's based on the size of the container, not the capacity. So while the vector can hold 10 elements, when we do something like a range-based for loop right here, so when we say auto i in v1, right, this is based on the size, it's not based on the capacity. All right, so getting rid of the last element is fine, but you know there are circumstances where I don't really, I don't care about getting rid of the last element. The element I want to get rid of is somewhere within the vector, right? So we can also call erase, right? So erase will go ahead and take an iterator, and for simplicity here, I'll go ahead and erase the beginning element. But we could also give it an offset. We could say begin plus two, right? So this will move the iterator over. So begin is at the first element. Begin plus one will be the second element. Begin plus two will be the third element. So in this case, though, we'll just get rid of begin. 
and we'll print out the size and the capacity and the contents of the vector. So let's go ahead and recompile again and we'll run it. All right, so we'll go ahead and run vectors. And we see that now my, we'll go ahead and move it up a bit. We see that now my vector capacity or my vector size is three, right? So I, I erased an element, so it got rid of it. And then my capacity is 10, right? So again, it doesn't get rid of the capacity, just gets rid of this, uh, an element, right? And decreases the size. And it got rid of the first element this time, so this one. So now it's uh, two, three, and five are the contents of my vector. All right. So what are some other ways that we can access these elements? So just like an array, we can also access it using the normal indexing. So these square brackets. So I can access, say, the first, uh, the zeroth, the first, and the second elements. Right? So in this case, it'll print two, three, and five. Right? But then I also have another way that I can access. It's a bit safer and less of a C style way of accessing. So I can access using at, right? this at method. Now this at method is very similar to this um, to this indexing, except that it actually performs a range check here, right? So this is nice, and we'll cover this a bit later when we talk about exceptions, right? Um, it's a safer way to go ahead and access elements, right? But at the cost of it, actually has to do a range check. So let's go ahead and uh, recompile this. So we'll do G plus plus again, and we'll run it, and we'll go ahead and move it up. And you see that I can, with normal indexing, I can read two, three, and five, and using the at method, so at zero, at one, and at two, I get two, three, and five again, right? But a more C++ way of doing it, but maybe at a little bit extra of a cost, right? So there are other methods that are associated with vectors, right? So we can also do clear, right? Clear performs a similar met uh, method to say, um, erase, right, or pop back, but clear just says I'm going to get rid of my entire size. Right? But again, it doesn't actually get rid of the capacity, it leaves the capacity as is. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. It's a basic introduction to vectors and kind of how they work a little bit underneath the kind of the interface that we uh, usually work with. So if you're interested in any of these videos, they can all be found um, uh, on my on the YouTube channel, so all the previous videos are in this uh, particular playlist, but all the code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we have a whole bunch of different uh, series on here related to GPU programming, C++ programming, even some Python stuff. So here we're looking at C++ crash course, right, and we've got a whole a entire readme of explanation of things, but we looked at fundamental concepts and we looked at containers and we looked at vectors. So feel free to download this, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions and if there's a particular topic that you would like covered, just shoot me a message and I'll be happy to look into it. But that's gonna do it for today. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.